In this video, I'm going to introduce three phases. But I'm not going to put them in a porous medium to begin with. I'm actually just going to talk about the properties of the three phases and introduce this concept of spreading. So let's just define the three phases to begin with. We label them one, two, three. And that's in order of density. Phase one is the densest phase, then phase two, then phase three. You want something a little bit more concrete, and in fact, in all the examples we're interested in, phase one is going to be water, phase two will be an oil, and phase three will be a gas. So now I'm going to talk about a situation that I think many of you are familiar with. You can do this at home if you're interested. Okay, so imagine I've got phase one, so that's water, so I've got a pan of water or dish of water, or I'm looking at a pond, okay? And then we've got phase two that I'm actually going to show in green. I've got a droplet of phase two, and this is in the air, so that's phase three. So what would happen if I introduce this droplet to the water? So I put a drop of oil on water. Well, you probably know what's going to happen. I might say, well, two things can happen. One is that droplet can just float on the water, right? Due to the densities, that should be possible. Okay, so it just floats on the water. And you can see this if you do it at home with some vegetable oils. You see this droplet floating on the water. But you should also know that in some cases that isn't what happens. Pouring oil over troubled water is, in fact, the oil spreads out and actually tries to suppress some of the waves. So the oil can actually spread out. It can spread out to a molecular thickness. So let's look at that in a rather more scientific fashion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the configuration of now a droplet floating on water, and we'll have a look at, at what that means. So here, I'll do it up here. This again is phase one. Okay, then we have phase two, which is the oil, and it's a bit like a, a floating iceberg, okay? It's gonna be mainly below the water surface and some above, that's phase two. And then we have phase three here at the top. Okay. So now let's recall many videos ago, the Young equation. So the Young equation was a balance of interfacial tensions. And here we have a proper both vertical and horizontal balance of interfacial tensions. So if this is sigma one three, interfacial tension between gas and water, and then we have these two other interfacial tensions at this point of contact, and in fact, it's a, it's a line, in fact, a loop of contact, Okay, like this, this is sigma 1, 2, this is sigma 2, 3. And here, this must form a triangle of forces. So if you put these, these three vectors together, they must form a triangle so that you have both a horizontal and a vertical force balance. Okay, so that's fine, and that, that defines essentially what that configuration looks like. But now, let's define what I'm going to call a spreading coefficient. And it will be clear why it's called a spreading coefficient. And that's the interfacial tension of this one. Actually, it'd be more elegant to do it minus 1, 2, minus 2, 3. Okay. So the spreading coefficient is this interfacial tension minus the other two. And I'll call that Cs. Now, in this case, in order for there to be a balance of forces, we have to have Cs is less than zero. Why is that? Well, this interfacial tension must be less than the sum of these two, because if it's greater than the sum of these two, even as the droplet gets thinner and thinner, I still can't have a force balance. This one is strong enough to pull the other two, which is, of course, exactly where we're heading. So if we, we have a negative spreading coefficient, Okay, or something that's non-spreading. So this interfacial tension minus these two gives you a negative number. Then you have a non-spreading oil or a non-spreading phase two, and that just floats on the surface like that with this vertical balance of forces. Fine. But you know oil can spread on water. So what happens when it does? So in this case, you have Cs 
is greater than zero, so this is a spreading oil. So what happens there? Well, actually, it turns out there are two things that could happen. So if this is genuinely spreading, this interfacial tension is bigger than those two. So it's as though, and this is really what's happening, it's dragging the oil across the surface. And what that means is it's actually energetically, thermodynamically more stable for the bare water-gas interface to be coated with oil. And in fact, classically, this continues to spread. It just continues and continues and continues until you've got a molecular layer of oil across the surface. So let's draw that schematically. Okay, so we got the water surface like this. But now we actually have a molecular layer of oil across that surface as well. So this is phase one again. This is phase three. Now, with this molecular layer, the interfacial tension, the energy per unit area of this interface is different from here, isn't it? Because now, this was an interface where you've broken all the hydrogen bonding and you're just in contact with the gas. Here, actually, is where, just right, you've got water, and then you've got a layer of oil where there's, there's going to be some intermolecular interactions, and then you've got the gas. And you're going to say, hmm, that seems complicated. Maybe the interfacial tension is larger. No, if the interfacial tension is larger, it wouldn't have happened. The only reason why there is oil on that interface and a molecular scale is because it's lowering the interface tension. It's lowering the energy. It's favourable. If it weren't favourable, we'd be there. Okay, so it's only happening because it's favourable. So we now have a different interfacial tension, sigma 1, 3, which we can call in equilibrium. Basically in equilibrium where it's been able to be mixed with the oil. So now we can have a, a new situation, which is again a position of equilibrium but where now we have, in theory, all of these interfacial tensions can change. I know it seems a bit bizarre. Maybe there can be some water molecules on this interface and some gas on this interface. It doesn't make a lot of physical sense, but just for, uh, for generality, we can assume that these are in equilibrium. So in this case, we have a spreading oil to begin with. Sorry, I think my spelling's not very good. Spreading oil to begin with, but something that is non-spreading in equilibrium. So our CS equilibrium value of the spreading coefficient, which is just these values in equilibrium, which means they've been in thermodynamic equilibrium with all three phases mixed together. And, and specifically what this means is you can have a molecular layer of phase two of oil between the gas and water interface, right? So this is one, two minus two, three. And this is less than zero. Okay. But what happens, you might say, yeah, um, okay, that's fine, but surely there's a third possibility. So this is possibility one, right? This is possibility two. Well, there's actually a third possibility. And the third possibility is complete spreading. As you might say, well, uh, okay, I can see this, but what happens if instead there still isn't a force balance? Because this is still larger. And what that means is that even with a molecular layer of oil, it still wants to pull more oil across the surface. It still wants more, more oil. Molecular layer, that's not enough. I want more, more, more oil on the interface. Well, if that happens, then basically this film essentially swells, doesn't it? You get a film that gets getting fatter and fatter and fatter as it's putting more and more oil on it. So the third eventuality is in fact this, which is, and I'll explain why, the equilibrium spreading coefficient is in fact zero. And what you have here is phase one. You then have a film that can be thick of phase two. And then phase three is here. Now, the reason why this gives you a zero uh, equilibrium spreading coefficient is because any oil basically just resides here as a film or a layer between the other two phases. Basically, it gets thicker and thicker. Well, at some stage, you have a layer that's outside the range of intermolecular forces. So 
here, right, what have we got? Dot sigma one three equivalent, but it's basically this interface plus this interface, isn't it? So I'm using the wrong colors, right? So this, the energy per unit area of this interface is just the energy per unit area of a two three interface and a one two. So by definition, this is equal to sigma two three plus sigma one two equilibrium. So that means the spreading coefficient is by definition zero. Now, what do we really see? So you can do this, as I said, you can do this at home with vegetable oils. You can get some oils that, that, that float, some oils that spread. But if you recall back to one of the very earliest videos, I showed, and that was by looking at, you know, the hand-waving argument with intermolecular forces, that generally speaking, you found that the interfacial tension between one and three was roughly speaking between one and two plus two and three. So CS is normally close to zero. So for most systems where you have water, a gas, and a hydrocarbon, something where there's just van der Waals forces, a non-polar liquid that's a distinct phase, so the classic water, oil, gas type system. In that case, certainly at ambient conditions, this is about 70 millinewtons per meter. This is between this is between um, water and oil, so this is about 50 millinewtons per meter, and between gas and oil, air and oil, for instance, that's about 20 millinewtons per meter. So these two add up. So most cases is basically just about to spread, or indeed is spreading. And I say, okay, well that's 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 interesting. So in most cases, you know, the oil wants to sort of spread out. But what does that mean now if we do introduce? a porous medium. Well, if we introduce a porous medium, I'm going to do my classic triangle here in the little gap. Let's take a, a classic case, say from uh, oil recovery. So what we've got here is, imagine a water wet porous medium to start with. Okay, so we've got water in here. We have um, oil phase two in the middle of the pore space. And now imagine that we inject a gas. Now that gas can be injected to displace oil, but it can also be injected, say, for storage purposes. So imagine the gas phase three is, um, say, uh, carbon dioxide. So we're storing carbon dioxide into a depleted oil field. Now, I'm going to show this later, but basically the gas is always non-wetting to the oil. So... The gas phase three is a non-wetting phase. But what happens? We have phase three is a non-wetting phase going into the center of the pore space. Phase two then forms a layer between phase one and phase three. Why is that? Well, the gas is the non-wetting phase in the presence of oil, goes into the center of the pore space. There's water in the corners of the pore space What's in between? Oil. Why is it forming this layer? Because it likes to spread. So you have a situation of most porous media where you've got oil and water present and you introduce a gaseous phase. This could be carbon dioxide, it could be air, it could be natural gas. The oil wants to spread everywhere. Wherever there's an interface between phase three and phase one, the oil wants to be there. No. The interface between phase one and phase three is very high energy. You're breaking those hydrogen bonds. It's unfavorable. It wants to get covered by anything. It wants to get covered by the oil. So the oil spreads everywhere. So what you do is you get these layers of oil. And that leads actually, I have to say, to very effective oil recovery because the oil is now long, no longer trapped in the pore space. It isn't trapped. What you also find is this is true even if I change the wettability. So even if I were to render this surface oil wet and indeed it can even be gas wetting which is what we're going to show in the next video and so now these interfaces bulge out like this so the water pressure can be higher than the oil pressure you've still got these layers you've still got the oil spreading so the oil is wetting to gas right the oil wants to be next to the gas okay so it's the wetting phase it wants to spread across it so this has this has large consequences. I'm not going to say 
too much about, but we do get these oil layers. So oil spreading on a flat surface results in oil layers when we're in a porous medium. And this re means that the oil isn't trapped. It's actually a very efficient oil recovery process. And we have the carbon dioxide that's going through the centers of the pore space. But there is one subtlety there. I've shown this picture and this picture is correct, even if I change the wettability. But the idea that the, the phase three goes through the center of the pore space seems like a bad idea because now it's really connected. And so I, for instance, I can eject CO2 and then it's gonna channel along and escape. But actually it's a little bit more subtle than that. So in the next video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about wettability when we have three phases and actually some, some interesting consequences.